Trump is broke, and that's dangerous. Breaking news of a new court filing showing former President Trump is facing insurmountable difficulties in obtaining a bond to pay a nearly half a billion dollar civil fraud judgment. The judge ordered Trump to pay $355 million plus interest after holding him liable for a decade's worth of business with fraudulent financial statements that overvalued his real estate holdings and hyped his wealth. I hear the facts. As you just heard, a court filing says that Trump approached 30 underwriters to back the bond due at the end of this month to pay more than $464 million in penalties and interest. But it's not working out. An insurance broker signed an affidavit stating that securing the bond for the full amount was a practical impossibility. You see, Trump's lawyers are asking for an appeals court to hold off, arguing the value of his properties was far more than the judgment. But that shit's not flying. Assuming those things are true, the problem, according to a new court filing, Diane, is that no insurance company wants to underwrite a bond using Trump's real estate holdings as collateral. Uh, Trump says that as financially stable as he is, uh, the, the amount of the bond, nearly a half billion dollars, makes it impossible for him to secure it only with cash, which is what an underwriter would typically prefer. He'd like to put up some of his real estate holdings, but no company, not even Chubb, the insurance giant that's underwriting his bond in the E. Jean Carroll case, is willing to accept it as collateral. And so his attorneys are asking the judge to allow Trump to post a bond in a far lesser amount that would be easier for him to obtain. In layman's terms, it's really simple. If I asked you to borrow $100 and the only collateral I could put up was a penny, what would you say? I have only one thing to say. Go f yourself. I couldn't agree more. Well, part of the reason for that, Katie, is because when you're talking about real estate, you don't know what the mortgages on those properties are or what's old on those properties. So creating a valuation system that's going to allow them to properly assess what those properties are worth is very complicated and it's a complex process. So they want stuff that they know is very marketable and immediately something that they can liquidate if they need to. So ultimately what we're talking about is Donald Trump needing to find more or less a half a billion dollars. But why is this dangerous? I'm getting to that. Trump needs money and he needs it fast. Will he have to sell properties? I don't know. This is a guy that actually bankrupted a casino. How the hell do you lose money owning a casino? But it's possible he can't sell the properties he owns because he's underwater, meaning he owes more than the properties are worth. This is another reason he has to become president because then he holds all the cards. But here's the frightening part. These people want something from Trump and they're not broke. Putin, the Saudis, China, and the mob all have deep pockets and could use a friend in high places. But the question isn't whether or not Trump would take their money in return for favors. He just did that for Paul Yoss, the majority owner of TikTok's parent company. Yoss is a billionaire, and before these judgments against Trump, Tiny Finger supported banning the app. Now, he's all in to save it. So Trump says he's broke, or let me correct that, he just can't find half a billion dollars in his sock drawer. Trump will never admit failure, but sometimes when you keep saying something that is a lie, it starts to smell just like that. Here's the good news. I'm very rich. I don't need anybody's money, it's nice. I'm really rich. I'm the most successful person ever to run. Fortunately, I'm very rich. So I have a total net worth, and now with the increase, it'll be well over $10 billion. I'm not doing that to brag, because you know what? I don't have to brag, I don't have to, believe it or not. Now, I could read you all the court filings so you can understand, but here's the real story. There are two things that foreign adversaries look for to try to get leverage on their enemy, their sex life and their money. We've already heard the infamous P tape. We have news on this tonight. Now, let's remember how it all started, morphing from a kind of political intrigue to at times a national joke. All eyes on a breaking news story involving the president-elect Donald Trump and an allegation of compromising intelligence in the hands of the Russians. Donald Trump didn't seem to care much about Russian election meddling, but cared a lot about Russian prostitutes. Oh my God, it's real. The DOJ report detailing the dossier claimed the Russians had this file on Trump's alleged sexual activities. That's a major claim, just releasing it can really hurt a public figure. And none other than James Comey went and presented the claim to Trump stating it was unverified. And then, far less defensively, Mr. Comey, after leaving government, went public with that story in his book and on his book press tour. I'm about to talk to him about allegations that he was involved with prostitutes in Moscow and that the Russians taped it and have leverage over him. I did not go into the business about um, people peeing on each other. And he interrupted, started talking about it. You know, do I look like a guy who needs 
hookers. I didn't answer that, and I just moved on. And, and we all wondered a lot if this is why Trump bends over for Vlad, and it could be that, but it's more likely this, money. The very reason Trump is in legal jeopardy is because he's always equated his wealth with the size of his hands. What? He hit my hands. Nobody has ever hit my hands. I've never heard of this one. Look at those hands. Are they small hands? <laughs> And he referred to my hands. If they're small, something else must be small. I guarantee you there's no problem. I guarantee you. Trump confirms right here that he doesn't have the money, which means that he's a desperate man with a checkered past who could be in a position really soon to make deals anywhere and anytime with anyone. The billionaire, who asks to remain anonymous, says, quote, Trump sues everyone. And what if he puts the asset into bankruptcy? Most will say, I am not touching this guy. Evan Gottlob, a partner of the law firm Saul Ewing, is placing his bet on the Middle East and China. He says, quote, there are plenty of banks in the UAE, the New Wall Street, as well as in countries like Saudi Arabia. He also has close ties to China. Trump has plenty of connections abroad. He has a newly minted partnership with the Saudi real estate firm and the government of Oman. His son-in-law, Jared Kushner, meanwhile, has been cozying up to Saudi Arabia's crown prince, Mohammed bin Salman. Kushner's nearly two-year-old private equity firm reportedly received a $2 billion investment from Saudi Arabia's sovereign wealth fund. Of course, taking this path would raise fresh questions about his business partners and conflicts of interest right in the middle of an election. But that likely won't deter Trump. And while Trump is in trouble for that very thing, lying about his worth to get loans and then lying about their lack of value to avoid taxes, his financial vulnerability is the story today. This is Illinois Congressman Sean Kasten, who's saying what I'm saying. Trump's financial position is a danger to our nation's security. We know Trump has taken money from Russia. The, who's funding all this, this growth? Because nobody else in America is doing it. Uh, I think I said, so who is it, the Israelis or the Chinese? Because they are the ones that were really spending money. I remember very clearly what he said. He said, no, we don't, we don't need American banks. We, get the, uh, we have all the funding we need out of Russia. Taking money from the Saudis. They currently own the 45th floor of Trump Tower, and China gave the equivalent to Ivanka in trademark deals on her products. And the mob? Trump's been investigated four times by the FBI throughout the 80s and 90s. Over the next few days, weeks, and months, while we wait for trials on the numerous indictments facing Trump, Trump will be aided by the likes of Judge Cannon, SCOTUS, the MAGA Republicans in the House, his GE crowd of racist hillbillies, and they are racist. But the groups we really need to fear are those with money and a need to be on the inside. What could Trump do for Putin? How about an invasion of NATO? He already said he would let Putin do whatever the hell he wants. Or China, maybe an ease on import tariffs. Or Kim. And then we fell in love, okay? No, really. He wrote me beautiful letters. I don't know, maybe we'll get him a honeymoon suite. But the real worry should be our national security. Because Trump will get the stolen booty from these really dangerous people, and then Captain Fruit Loops will lose it all and need more. There's nothing more dangerous than a broke, desperate man, with the possible exception of a broke, desperate sociopath who is also our president. Let that sink in. Who's with me? This isn't their Republican Party anymore. Am I wrong? Damn right. Yes. Tick tock. You're in a lot of trouble, Donnie. <laughs> Follow, like, and hit notifications as Really American keeps you up to date on the latest Republican cult lie in this very important year. For Really American, I'm Chip Franklin.